trip. Do it for your name. But they're gonna be a day when you did it. And welcome to Personality Profile here on Joy 99.7 FM. I'm Lexus Bill, and I look forward to these conversations. Of course, we get to speak to people who are making amazing moves here in Ghana and helping the country in various ways. And today, I have one such good conversation for you. Yeah, a name that you probably have heard in so many quarters and so many industries, whether it be in the quarters of the high net worth industries or high net worth individuals, or whether it's in real estate, or probably whether it's in dreams and hopes of some of us. So my guest is an industrial investor and a renowned businessman. Now, majority of his businesses is focused on Ghana, obviously, covering various key sectors of the Ghanaian economy, agriculture, mining, construction, real estate. He's a civil engineer and has a wealth of experience in civil engineering and building construction, particularly within the West African context. Yeah. He was born in Italy in 1948 and settled in Ghana somewhere in the 60s and has made a very good name for himself. Please help me welcome the CEO of Trasaco Valley Estate, Mr. Ernesto, Ernesto Tariconi is my guest on Personality Profile. Welcome, sir. Thank you, thank you. Now, this this is something you probably didn't know about him. He's a musician too. We are le we are yet to launch his music career. <laughs> they, they they don't know you sing at all. Ah, so before we even talk about uh, business, Trasaco, life in Ghana, and all, I think we need to give them a taste of your baritone voice, <laughs> don't you think? Oh, so? no. <laughs> I, I know you've recorded your own professional songs. Yes, I have. Uh, how many? How many? Songs I do have you one. Uh, I started in 2017. Oh, okay. I it's do a CD yearly, and the CD is about 10, 10 songs. So wow. today it's about 50 songs. So you have you about know. 50 recorded, professionally yes, recorded yes, songs. Yes, yeah. Yep. Wow. <laughs> but we mm. we're yet to see you perform on a stage. I mean. Mm. Ghana's yeah. Independence Day was just a couple of days ago. You could have taken the stage and performed for Ghana, you know? Mm, no, I Since did it once. I don't really like to perform on stages. Yeah. But well, only can, once. My ex-wife, it was her birthday, and uh, I sang at, the, at their party. Oh, you sang for your ex-wife on her birthday? Yeah, yeah, for her birthday, yes. Wow. <laughs> so, what kind of music do you do? No, my age kind of music, classical. Uh, uh -huh. My favorites are Sinatra, Dean Frank Martin, Sinatra. Yeah. Okay, uh, Nat King Cole, uh, mm, and some country music. And some country music. Yeah, Kenny Rogers. Yes, yes, Kenny Rogers, uh, Don Williams. Don Williams, yeah. Dolly Parton. Wow. Okay, mm. so if you were to sing a song for us, what song would you sing? No, I'm not going to sing now. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, how do you perform? Mm. I thought you were always ready. <laughs> no, 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 I don't. And maybe you, I'm can, really... maybe you can do an original by Ernesto Tarconi, or maybe one of the Frank Sinatra songs. Or yeah. should we do the Gambler? Mm. Well, first of all, I need the music background. I can't just oh, sing you, you without. Need, you need yeah. beats before you. Beats before, yeah. <laughs> you don't do a cappella. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, think about it. We'll see whether we'll be able to get uh, a beat for you a bit later, or maybe one of these. We should share some of your songs as well, since you have five CDs, yes. five albums recorded. I'll probably play uh, some of your songs for my listeners and my viewers as well. Yeah. But really good to see you. Here sat in your lovely garden and uh, it looks very peaceful. I hear the birds and all. Yeah. How, how are you doing? Mm, I'm doing fine. I've, uh, time has passed. Yeah. So and as time passes, we grow older. Yeah. So like you said, the area here is very peaceful. Yeah. Sometimes people ask why I live here, and uh, when you mention Pantang, the feeling is Pantang is it doesn't suit me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I how, like it here. How is the CEO of Trasaco Valley Estates not living in one of the five million dollar homes or two million dollar homes in Trasaco Valley Estates? Mm, I like to, as a developer, that's always been my hobby my what i've always felt to do yeah so before i go to that i do so many other things but i knew that i must do the developments like trasaco yeah uh, i like to build beautiful things but it doesn't mean i should live into one of them rather yeah. to me comfort peace of mind space is yeah. more important you see uh, this was by accident that I'm here. Uh, it was in the 80s, the revolution that came about. Yeah. It was very dangerous, I would say. I was living at the airport near ex-president Kufo's house. Okay. I was one of the first ones to build there. For some years, there was no much activity going on in Ghana. Everything was at a standstill. Because mm -hmm. okay. I had nothing better to do. So I started building these uh, bungalows. What were they meant for? Mm, I just had the land. I said, let me build them. I knew I had some industries that would pick up and it would be ideal to some of the managers to keep them here. And exactly what happened. Hmm? Uh, so it came by, call it an accident, but yeah. it turned out very useful. Yes. And this is where you've been living since? Yeah, since the 80s. I've been here now. 42 years, I'm here. Yes. 42 years. Wow. If you ever wondered why the CEO of Trasaco Valley says, lives in a bungalow in Pantan, thereabouts, and not in one of the mansions in Trasaco, well, he just told us a story. That's quite a, a very interesting story. And I, and I can feel the peace and serenity in this place. Um, I don't know whether it's as chaotic in Trasaco, <laughs> but it's also very peaceful there, yes. isn't it? You know, with age, you... Your perception of uh, your world, the world changes. Yeah. You know, when you are young, you want to take it all, you want to build a house that's uh, enormous. As you get old, you rather... Uh, I've lived at Village, or I've built houses and so on. But I was very uncomfortable. Mm. Because from your bedroom, if you want a coffee, to get to the kitchen, it's quite a distance. <laughs> yeah, it's very convenient. Yeah. From a bed, it's very fast. Yeah. Mm? yeah. But it's the compound. When you entertain, rather you need a big compound, yeah. which I have. Yeah. Mm? And no way I would change my uh, way of living to anywhere else. It's Good. too comfortable for me here. There's a lot to learn from that, absolutely. But let's get to the journey itself today we get to explore the journey from the beginning the journey from italy because you were born in italy i was born yeah, in rome in rome in rome yeah 1948. Okay. Uh, i can say my real mentor is my father okay who passed away quite young in 1979 and although we had our differences i left home when i was 16. you left home Yes, yes, because 
I didn't like certain things, you know, children, the quarrel with the family, and then you well, just what, what were you quarreling with your parents about? It's, uh, I had a stepmother, and stepmother, she was a good lady, but you know, they, they create situations, and, uh, and my father was torn, which I should take. <laughs> and he took the side against me, wow. which I felt very hurt, and, uh, uh, and I got beaten, let me put it like that. Mm. By Those days, by my father, yes, yes. And uh, I kept quiet. Then I went to bed and planned my journey to the UK. In those days, the UK, Italians needed a visa to enter the UK. And uh, so I traveled to the UK with a train. No money, hardly anything. Uh, and when I got to Dover, we crossed with the ferry boat. Immigration started checking, you know, the loggers asking questions, and they realized that, what are you coming to do in the UK? And you lie, I'm a student, I'll do this and that, but there was no evidence. So they turned me back. And uh, in the night, the ferry boat uh, uh, shut down, so you have to wait the following morning. So they put me in a nice cell. In and a sale. Nice one, not like we have you okay. <laughs> but it was a sale. <laughs> yeah, it was a sale. Good. Mm -hmm. I was confined. Uh -huh. And, uh, but luckily I was not alone. They turned back quite a number of people. Okay. So that's, I was the kid. Yeah. And there were other Italians, 20 years, 24 years. So I, uh, I stopped behind them. The following morning, when the ferry boat is ready to move, before then, they got us a very wonderful breakfast. I'll never forget a British breakfast. Mm. Which I never tried uh, British breakfast, you see. So they served us nicely. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then after that, on the ferry boat, and they sent us back to out of England. So we landed at Calais in France. Uh, one of the friends I had made in the cell room he had uh, some sort of girlfriend in the UK uh, who used to work for a legal uh, uh, office. Okay. She was a secretary. Mm. So he called her, bah, 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 and she arranged to, to get us in order, register us in a school. And, um, and uh, while that was going on, we were in Calais for about two weeks. And I paid no money, but thank God, I met this my two friends. Yeah. <laughs> they were taking care of me. Hmm? One was a rascal, a delinquent, I would call him. The, the elder one. Yeah. Do you remember his name? Yeah, Piero. Are you still in touch with him? Not really. He's in cell. He's in, he's in a proper cell now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Real delinquent. I yeah, very delinquent. Wow. And uh, the time came that this, the secretary, his girlfriend, flew to Calais with documentation that now we can cross the back to the UK. And we did. And anyhow, we did a lot of naughty things whilst I was in England. Yeah. We survived. For how long? Six months. And then My father happened? traced me. Oh, he traced you? He traced me, yes. And now it was not violent. He, in a nice way. Yeah, he wanted he said, you to come back home. Yeah, and I, of course. Yeah. The way I was brought up, you respect your father. Yeah. I went back. Prodigal son. And uh, Fabrizio, uh, he was heartbroken. Uh, he wanted me to leave him. And I said, well, what the nonsense are you doing? Your girlfriend has told you what she thinks of you. Let's go back. He stayed a while longer. Eventually came back, got married to an Italian woman, mm. has wonderful children, and uh, so we laugh when we meet, we laugh about it. At what point did you come to Ghana? After my father came for me, I think the next year, he had planned it, that he was coming to Ghana. Okay. He met at the party one Nanankatsia. Nanankatsia? Nanankatsia, yes. A chief? A chief, yes. Of which? And, no, it's in the Fant, in the Takoradi area. Okay. And he spoke highly of Ghana as coming up here and there. And my father just said, okay, let's go to Ghana. That's how 
That's how I landed here. So you came, uh, did you come first with your dad or he had come earlier? He had come, it all happened within a few months. Okay. He came earlier, then he went back, then one of my brothers came, mm. he went back, then another brother, I have three brothers, I've lost one. Okay. So, and I came, eventually I came. Mm. What was your father into at the time? Uh, my father, his foresight, he, uh, like I say, he's my mentor. He had big ideas. But what At least was he, he, he was also into construction. He was into construction. Construction, see. Okay. And uh, he, he was into buying lands. He felt, and in those days it was much easier, it's not what it is today. Yeah. It was very easy to buy land and the price was reasonable. He had a list of uh, setting up 33 different industries. Mm -hmm. but of course, he passed away, he couldn't... Uh, so he left something like a footprint for me to continue from. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when he came and uh, he thought that it was a good idea to bring you the stubborn son from UK come to Ghana as well. What did you think of no, that no, idea? No, no, I'm not the stubborn son. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I was hurt. A <laughs> few uh, months before, I had had an operation in my nose. Okay. To my nasal thing was deviated. Okay. So I had an operation. So, so that day when I was beaten, I felt ah. I just had an operation, listen, then you are beating me, you know. Yeah. So it's a combination of things that they say, no, 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 I'm going. Okay. So, but I, I love my father, not, uh, no doubt. Um, yeah. So when, when he suggested that you come to Ghana with him, Yes. what did you think of it? Well, I went to Encyclopedia to look up, uh, what's this Ghana? I've never heard of it before. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I saw it's in Africa. And uh, in those days, at least in Italy, you hear a lot of stories. Uh, Africa here, Africa there. Eh? Not uh, good comments. You know, they always say negative things about Africa. Like what? Mm, you know, they can eat you. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, and then the weather, very hot. Yeah. Uh, you can't uh, survive the heat. All of a sudden, day, daytime turns into nighttime. So, yeah. so at the time, Italians actually thought that Africans or Ghanaians ate humans. Yeah, now I'm a bit exaggerating, but uh, uh, you know, ignorance is a horrible, is a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. mm. So, regardless of all these negative comments you were hearing, you still wanted to come. Yes, because I thought the way I was brought up, you, your father, as long as he's around, is the patriarch, you, you follow him. Eh? Yeah. No matter what differences you have, you patch up and you follow your father. Mm. Okay. So the, the way I look at Italy, the central part of Italy, let's say from Rome downwards, is the true Italians. Mm. Mm. I'm sure this interview is listened by other Italians. <laughs> yeah. The northern part of Italy, we don't consider them Italians. They are not uh, warm or, or lovely like the southerners. Okay. So, so we from the south, let's call it the south, we, uh, we believe in family values. Unlike the people in, let's say, Venice, Verona? No, no, no. The father, mother will do their duties till you are of age. Then that's the door. Get out. Go and find your own uh, living. Your father in the south will never send you away. Okay. He will want to keep you. And if you marry, he wants your wife to come and live into his house. Okay. So they have uh, in the south they have sizable lands. So quickly yeah. they will build an attachment. Okay. So when well, you have like lunch or dinners, you yeah. see a table. Uh, 50, 60 people sitting there having uh, <coughs> lunch or dinner. Mm. Yeah. Is that the kind of family structure you are you are practicing now? Mm, well, I have four kids and uh, seven grandkids, and we meet regularly. Mm, uh, I they cook. Are all, they are all here in Ghana. Yes, they are all here. Okay. I've managed. I was successful in doing that. Mm. 
uh, and they're all in the family biz in the family business okay let's go back to <clears throat> when you came to Ghana now uh, you have all these stories of Ghana and then you land at the airport what greeted you well you hear a story that you enter into fire <laughs> so <laughs> they open the <laughs> The door to come out of the plane. Truly, you hear the the heat. The heat. <laughs> so, at the back of your mind, you heard the, the fire. <laughs> so that was the first shock. <laughs> then, that time when I came to Kotoka International Airport, mm. did not exist. Yeah, it was an old. Uh, it's gone now. Uh, so I came down. Then I see a lot of people trying to hold my luggage here and there. And again, I'm worried, what are going to do? They're going to steal my luggage. <laughs> and, uh, but they were only trying to help you. Yeah, to help, correct. But, uh, and my brother, who was already here, he was supposed to have come to pick me. He was late. So I was a bit worried. But eventually he showed up. And... Uh, we went home, and Young he insisted, let's go out at once. And I followed him, why not? And he took me to around Cantonment, there was a place called the Star Hotel. Star Wonder Hotel. Star, yeah, a wonderful place. And uh, in those days, everything's in the open. There were no closed uh, clubs, eh? everything was in the open. It was uh, Star Hotel, Lido, and a few others. Uh, and again, you go there, you see things for the first time you, you could have not imagined. And one of the first things I observed, every table has got so many empty bottles of beer. Yeah. You see? I mean, I say, usually in Italy you drink a beer, you order another one, they take the, <laughs> the empty bottle they away. They take the empty bottle away. And give you another. Yeah, yeah. The bottles were they stayed there. on the table. <laughs> and I realized there's a way of showing off how much beer you've drunk. <laughs> Okay, but then, as we are sitting at the dance floor, I see retired British men, 70, 75 year old, they are on the floor dancing with young girls. Mm -hmm. see? Which again, in Europe, when you are retired, you are retired. You can't go out, nobody wants you, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a bit uh, shocking, eh? Yeah. In a nice way, I said, what? I see. Yeah. You thought, oh, I can retire here too. Can retire, yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. In those days, I wasn't thinking of retirement. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it obviously, it was a good sight for you. Oh, very good. Very, very, very good. Very good. Very good. Yeah, yeah. They're in the old it shows age, you that the uh, independence you got it in '57. I'm sure yeah. there were British people years before. Yeah. And they enjoyed their life here. They uh, they're going back to England to uh, to die. Mm -hmm. Uh, eventually they'll die, but at least let me die where I'm enjoying myself. So, mm, hey, uh, you know, there are memories, uh, I can especially see when you talk about it. Yeah, back in your back mind. In mind. I, can, yeah. I can tell. Good stuff it's, there. Uh, now, let's, let's talk about, now that you landed here, you were in your teens, right? Yes. Probably 17, 18, Correct. or about. Yep. Um, did you school here? No. What did you do? I then? did it by correspondence. You did it by correspondence? Yes, what yes. does it mean? You register yourself abroad, and they send you papers, and you give exams, and you submit, and that's it. And that's it? Yep. And that's how you studied? Yes. Mm, but again, personally, I didn't even want to study. It's, you know, a father ambition, a son should go to university, like you have it here, you see, yeah. every father's ambition. So I did it basically to please him, I was not interested. Mm. Always I feel, mm, at least the early education I think is necessary. I guess to a stage that mm, if you feel you can achieve, uh, why are you wasting your time, eh? But like I said, I did it mainly for my father's sake. Okay. So, so you actually at at some point thought that uh, you didn't need the education. No. So how then mm. did you plan on surviving or thriving? Well, I never wanted to be an employee, so I knew all along 
that I'll be some sort of entrepreneur here or there. Okay. okay. So there's no way I can work for somebody. Sitting in the office from eight o'clock to for what? Hmm? No way, no way. You didn't see yourself doing that? Not at all, at all. How so? Hmm? I mean, what, what was it about you that made you think that you can't work for anybody? Well, you know, today, what is the world population today? Seven billion. Seven billion. And you could say that 90% or 95% of that population, their mentality is to get a job, work, and that's it. But there's a small percentage, they don't reason like that. They are the ones who rather will employ the 95% to keep things moving. Mm. So I can say I fell in that small percentage. Wow. Uh, uh, I would feel uh, useless to go and work for somebody. Because I can feel, I can, I can do better for myself and for others. Eh? Was mm. it because you, your, your father was a rich man? My father was not extremely rich. He was very comfortable. And uh, he too, he was an entrepreneur. I think he went to school up to the either fifth or sixth grade, eh? mm. not further than that. And he was very successful. What made you so convinced that You'll be successful in Ghana, a country you are not so familiar with. No. Until my father was alive, although even here we'll quarrel, I'll leave him many times, uh, I fell in love. Hmm? And at that stage, uh, where am I going? I don't have money, I don't have anything. Could have not taken her abroad. Um, although she was wealthy, eh? she had the money. It uh, was very convenient for me. If I quarrel quickly, I move with them. <laughs> and, uh, with a Ghanaian woman? Yeah, a Ghanaian woman. Wow. And, uh, you know, when you fall in love, it's... Uh, mm -hmm. mm. So that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. what, what did you that's mean? what made me to stay here. A, w a woman kept you here in Ghana? Yes. Uh, most likely I would have stayed anyhow, but I think she had a lot of uh, influence over that, me taking that decision. Where did you meet her and how did you meet her? Mm, strangely enough, she, she, was, uh, she had a shop, she was a trader and quite good at it. And uh, mm, trying to make herself, it's my, it's my stepmother. Mm. who got to know her. Then she was invited to one of our house parties. Mm. And that's how we got to know each other. Mm. Mm. That one thing led to another. Mm. <laughs> okay. well, she A wonderful, go, wonderful woman. You got married to her? Yes, yes, we got married. For how long? Married for more than 20 years. More than 20 years. 20 years. And yeah. then... Uh, uh, the usual story. Uh, you come home, she has said this, she has said that, and uh, one thing leads to another, then you just walk out. Hmm? She has heard this and that. What is that? You know what I'm talking about. No, I don't. Oh, you don't? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, mm, you know, the so, so, so called friends. Yeah. They spite you because if you are successful here and there, they will call her mm. and tell her they've seen me here, they've seen me there with so and so and so, so and mm. so and so. Okay? Times it was true, but many times it wasn't. Oh, at times it was true. So I come home, I open the door, and something is thrown at me. <laughs> and then quickly I close the door <laughs> and run. And you run one, two, three times, then enough is enough. Mm? And. Uh, Anyhow, we parted. Okay. And uh, uh, but today she's my sister. She's my everything. She's there for me, eh? and okay. I'm there for her. Anything yeah. she's, eh? and we've kept all the children together. And, um, all the four children. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, like I said earlier, four children with uh, seven grandkids. Seven grandkids. Yeah. Okay. Mm, all healthy, all uh, 
normal mind. Uh, yeah. So we've been blessed, let me say it. Okay. We've been blessed. And she's a full Ghanaian woman? Yes, yes. She's okay. from uh, uh, Mampong and Suta. Mampong and Suta. She's from Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, they are troublesome. <laughs> and they're strong. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, that's a very interesting story. And then, so now you're you're divorced. Yes. Do you plan on getting married again? At all. At you all want to go back all. to Star Hotel and <laughs> Those live exist. like that? They the hurt me when they destroyed the Star Hotel. It was very painful. It was painful. Huh? Mm. <laughs> You'd have loved to go back there and probably live. Mm. Like, well, like the British men. Like the, the British men, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's talk about work. Uh, now you are working with your father yeah. here. Let's talk about work now. Here you are deciding, look, I'm not meant to work for anybody. I've got to start my own business and be an entrepreneur. Where did you start from? Mm. I started with uh, my wife's small business. She had a shop on the other Braca Road. Adabraka? Yeah, called uh, Ruby Doobie. Ruby Doobie? Yes. Oh, well, uh, what, what were you into? She was selling dresses. Clothes? Um, yeah, mainly to those who could afford. Yeah. In those days she would travel Langana ways. It was quite cheap. Mm. And uh, with big valises and uh, come back with the big valises full of dresses, call her clientele and she would quickly sell. Wow. It was quite easy and straightforward. Uh, again, I felt um, it was a small business. Yeah. So I started by expanding it into doing proper trading, like wholesaler here and there. Yeah. And we started importing things in a big way. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, eventually she got pregnant. So. Um, I need this Ruby Doobie shop, <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing much better business. Uh, so she gave it to a friend. She just gave her the shop, and uh, then eventually collapsed. And uh, so trading, I can say trading was very rewarding, mm -hmm. but I felt cheap. You felt it, cheap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be called a trader, I felt uh, it was offensive to me. Uh, so um, those days, my mind said, oh, industrial, it sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I started setting up a number of industries. Okay. And uh, and then, surprisingly enough, that one too became industrial. It didn't sound good to it me. It didn't sound good to you. From trader, trader sounded cheap, mm -hmm. industrial is also... Yeah. So, uh -huh. and always my passion has been to create beautiful things, mm -hmm. especially in construction. But not one house or two houses, it's a complete area, develop it. Mm -hmm. That's how the Trasaco is today, and few others that we have. And uh, but for some reason, it's like I'm just popular because of Trasaco, but there are other uh, developments. Yeah, yeah. In, in which industries? In the same uh, state development. The yeah, state development. Okay. Mm, they've labeled us as very expensive, this and that. And I wanted to show that no, 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 no. Uh, we don't just build for the rich. We also build for uh, other kinds of people. Yeah. Mm, and uh, and we are doing another project which looks wonderful. It's doing extremely well. Okay. So which aside is, of Trasaco Valley Estates, we yes. test that you know, popularity as the rich, yes. high, mighty, famous yeah. estate. Yeah. There are ones that we can afford. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, popularity is interesting. You mentioned the word popularity. It comes, uh, it's a combination of things. Mm. For instance, when Ghana had its 50th uh, uh, anniversary of independence. Yes. Ghana at 50. Yes. President Kufo invited uh, all the presidents of the world. And I would say it was patronized mainly by African presidents. And they had run short of houses where to accommodate them. So I was asked, and why not? To be a success, I put up houses for them to stay in. Mm. And which the president was very appreciative for what I, uh, what I did, okay? And, and I met a lot of African presidents. Mm. And they were all what I developed by then. They were impressed because in their country they didn't have anything like this. Yeah. So all of them 
same, inviting me to go to the country and do the same thing. But of course, I didn't bother. I thought uh, the land I had was big enough. I'll be busy here for so many years. Uh, so I think that uh, that and few other things yeah. okay, is what made the name so popular. Yeah. It had this trouble with land litigation, so a combination of things yes. that makes your times popular. Not <laughs> did you did you did you, you so you didn't take up any of the offers of the other countries At to all, go and yeah. es establish Trasaco there. No, no, no. The only one I've taken up. Um, when I saw what happened here in the 80s with the revolution, yeah. and everything was at a standstill, then things started picking up. Mm -hmm. So during the revolution, the early days, you could buy anything very cheap, because mm -hmm. everybody was selling. So uh, I happened to know Charles Taylor in those days. Yeah. Mm, big talkative, this, and I believed him. So when uh, he took over, yeah. he invited me there to do some renovation. A lot of the buildings, there were bullets here and there. So I started with one building, it was the National Archives. And then they turned it into um, Liberian Investment Center. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, not that he started misbehaving, he just ignores you. He so I used, you. I used my money to do the building here, and they're quite expensive. Yeah. And then he, no way I can get my money back, is wow. it? So, so that's it. But even the money, I didn't want to take the money away. Because of the experience in Ghana, mm -hmm. I could buy so, complete streets there. Yeah. And whatever money I get there, I buy the streets and keep the land to do eventually development. Liberia picks up, you see. So that was my plan. Unfortunately, uh, Charles Taylor misbehaved. He never paid you? He never paid. Successive government, even the lady, she came to the 50th anniversary. Yes. And I mentioned to her, look, you, you owe me. Yes, yes. Sally Johnson. Yeah, yeah. You owe me this and that. So she pleaded that uh, they don't have money now, here and there. I said, well, put something right here. Pay small. Yeah. <laughs> So, so Liberia still owes you. Yeah, yeah, they owe. Oh. Maybe, maybe and I need to get you to speak to George Weir. Mm. I know him. I met him. You met him when I was there. Us? I used to stay in his hotel. Ah, very nice guy. Yeah. I never thought he could become president. Yeah. Is, uh, have you have you tried channeling your grievances no, no, to him? No, no, I've never. I've given up. Oh, you've given, given up on up, it. I've given up. Yeah. I see. Wow. Mm. So you stayed back in Ghana, developed the Trasaco Valley Estates, became very iconic, yeah. lots of influential people bought houses from you, built. Yeah, the, the you. expensive houses. Very expensive so houses. Do you remember how much you sold your first house for? Oh, it was cheap. At Trasaco? It was, uh, yeah, about $200,000, something like that. About $200,000. You, when I started there, a lot of friends advised me not to, because it wasn't developed, even before getting to Trasaco, all that area was uh, bush. undeveloped, bush. Yeah. And uh, because I had the land before Trasaco Valley, and I tried to start there, the trouble was too much with cutlasses here and there. I decided, let me go back. And trouble with what? With land litigation. Okay. Okay. So I went back in the bush, and there I started. And there were problems, but not as serious. And uh, but friends were advising me, "You are nuts! What are you doing here? Nobody's going to buy here and there." But I didn't listen. I just went ahead. And uh, so initially, as friends, I gave it uh, at cost, okay. or even less just to move in, to keep, catch the momentum, Yes. and eventually it did. Wow. Okay. What was the most expensive house you sold there? Mm, I don't know, you have to ask my daughter, but it's in the millions, uh, millions. but not, not many millions, maybe maximum two million. Two million dollars. Yeah. Or more. You know, some of these rich uh, buyers, uh, they buy a bigger truck of land, you build a house, then they want this, they want that, so you start adding on, adding on. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. So what was the business plan for Trasakwa exactly? Uh, to create an exclusive estate for people who are powerful and influential? No, no. It was for my personal ambition to create something different, unique, mm. prestigious, uh, to leave a mark behind, to leave a name. Yeah. Mm. And I repeat, that's what I enjoy doing. Eh? It's not... Uh, mm, so my thought there was not mm, business-minded. Okay. Just I felt... And to keep it ongoing, of course, people have to buy, otherwise I have to stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Um, One of the major challenges in the real estate industry is litigation, land litigation. Yes. And you probably have found yourself in court many times because of that. Yes. How do you go around it? You can't. You have to face it. And uh, I try as much as possible to avoid court cases, because you know when they start, you never know when they're going to end. So you just, uh, uh, you know, families or chiefs, they're always disputing among themselves. So I might buy it from you, and he will come and say the land is his, the other one will come, the land is his. Mm -hmm. And you'll be buying, you can either go to court with all of them, and that's it. The, the thing the judge will do, put an injunction. And that's it, you stop development. Mm -hmm. So the uh, logical thing, or the wise thing to do is come sit down, and, and you negotiate and give okay. them some money and that's how you keep on going again. Okay. okay. But Trasaco Valley, I can say I bought it ten times. You bought it ten times? Ten times, yes. And uh, uh, apart from that, uh, individuals who also were the genuine or fictitious documents, they were claiming portion. So I had to buy and buy and buy. So you kept buying the same buying, piece of yes. land that you had bought? Yes. Wow. So if you look at Trasaco Valley, usually economically, if you do a development, you start uh, and you move forward like that. Yeah. I had to move in a circle <laughs> to protect <laughs> the land, yeah, which is much more expensive because you have to develop the, all the infrastructures. Um. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I see. But like I said, you learn as... Uh, when I started, maybe if I knew what I'll go through, I would have never started. Mm. And then it's uh, mm, we, we've we've seen things. Yeah. We've seen things. Okay. Well, what are some of the other challenges you you face? Mm, like I said, building. I enjoy building. So um, challenges you might have with some of the workers. Mm. They are naughty. You turn your back. They go and hide, or, or they steal from you. Yeah, but that's manageable. Not uh, the main challenge is land, uh, land litigation. Yeah. Okay. You've done business for many years in Ghana. Let's talk about the general business atmosphere. Is it better now than before? Mm, Ghana has changed since I first <coughs> came, and. Uh, when I first came, it was a very simple uh, economy. Mm, nothing much, I can say. So, uh, since the 2000s, Ghana has really grown potentially. Mm. Okay. But I feel it could have grown much, much, much more. Mm. And uh, uh, again, uh, you know, Ghana, I think we talk too much. Mm, and nothing gets done. I think we talk too much. Yes, yes. I'm talking about everybody, uh, Ghanaian citizens. We talk, 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 and uh, nothing happens, you see. Mm. And, uh, and, uh, and to answer you what you asked before, that I will never work for anybody, it's, uh, uh, you know, I think how to create things. Uh, and I do them. Mm -hmm. See, it's not just talk, talk, talk. Yeah. It's not, yeah. Uh, so. But with all these challenges that you faced, did it ever discourage you or get to a point you are like, okay, I wanna just give up? Because I'm, in, I'm thinking. No, I don't give up. Mm. But I've, uh, like I said, I've aged. 
yeah. before I was very, when I was operational, very active. When they see me coming, everybody <laughs> shakes. Uh -huh. Now when they see me coming, oh, grandpa is coming. <laughs> 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 and uh, mm, so basically I sit back, of course, I tell my kids direction, this advice. And luckily for me, they are they also determined to, to make the best of things, you see. I just feel, uh, and of course it will come, mm. but Ghana deserves uh, a better standing than where it is today. Yeah. I mean, and it's not the politician, mm. it's the people. That it's can not make a politician. The, no, no, no. Politicians all over the world, they have the differences, problems, and mm. we always accuse them, but really it's the people. Mm. Uh, I'll give you an example, take the Chinese. The China is great, not because of the Communist Party, because of the people. They are hardworking, they sacrifice, they... Eh? But yeah, we like it easy, we like it the easy way. I think Ghanaians like it the easy way. Yeah, yeah. And uh, when I developed some houses in Obuasi, um, it was by contract to complete uh, 150 houses in one year. And uh, so I brought 10 Chinese. Okay. And truly, with the 10 Chinese, I managed to build the 150 senior staff houses eh? mm. in Obuasi. Uh, they're hardworking. They came, they don't speak English. So with the 10, there was an additional one, which was the interpreter. Mm -hmm. They brought some little tools themselves. They were all engineers. But they physically did the job. Mm -hmm. okay. Very hard working. Today we have a lot of problems with the Chinese here because they're involved in the mining sector, the gold here and there. And uh, of course they're thinking they come from another country, they <laughs> they're coming here to make money. Mm -hmm. okay. And if they do what they're doing, which is illegal, it's because somebody is facilitating it for them. So, Mm -hmm. uh, if you had to advise people in the business world, what would you tell them? No, he, I feel politicians should surround themselves with genuine uh, achievers to make a difference, you see. I don't, that's not happening, and, uh, uh, but yes, the business community that if they get together, I think they could make a change. Mm. Ghana's per capita income is about, what, $2,000? That of Italy is like 10 times ours. You yeah. never saw an opportunity to probably go invest in Italy? No, no, no. Uh, mind the, uh, what you call per capita, uh, also the cost of living in Europe, America is much, much higher. So. Yeah, what is beautiful here that uh, even people don't work, you look at them, they are very healthy here and there. So you wonder how they, they do it. <laughs> but God has blessed Ghana with weather, good land. You have it all. And maybe that's uh, what is, uh, uh, is not making things work out. Because mm. you have it, it's too easy. Mm? It's too easy. It's too easy, yes. I see. You're a full Ghanaian now? Yes. When did you get your citizenship? Early 2000. Early 2000? So it yep. took you that long? Well, I never applied for it. Why? Uh, I didn't see the need here or there. So it came to a time that, you know, it's President Kufo who married me. So... Uh -huh. he, he, he did what? He, he married. I got married and he was the one who did the... Uh, the, the wedding uh, performed as the uh, at that time it was in Kumasi as the municipality. I don't know what. Yeah. So it, the function it was done by him. Oh, I see. Yeah. So he mm. granted you the citizenship. I applied. Well, you applied. And I think when I got to him, he, he saw no reason why he should not grant it. No? Yeah. So you're full Ghanaian now. Well, I think uh, I came to Ghana before you were born. 
So <laughs> I can say I'm more Ghanaian than you. <laughs> You're more Ghanaian than uh, I yes. am, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I get that. Anyway, I mean, one of the things we try to do with personality profile is to inspire the young people who are coming up. And I'm sure a lot of people will be inspired by a story of perseverance through this terrain and building the amazing mm -hmm. businesses and all that you've done. For young people looking up to you, what would you advise them? What would you tell them? That uh, for as hard as it is, and, and always the beginning is the hardest part, mm -hmm. but if you are determined and you are committed, you will make it. Mm. But most people, they start, they find that it's too hard here and there, they abandon the, the dream. Mm. Never abandon the dream, persist, sacrifice, suffer. Mm. But the best comes through suffering. Yeah. Mm. But like I said, Ghana, easy life. Yeah. So nobody suffers. Nobody wants to suffer. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see. Do you have any regrets? But if you are determined, you can. Anybody can make it. Do you have mm. any regrets? Mm, no, not really. No, no. Like I said, I'm blessed mm. with the family and. Uh, no, and uh, yeah, I've been through uh, things here and there, but I'm sure whatever life had led me to, I would have had the same problems yeah. again. Not, uh, uh, I love it. I love it here. Mm -hmm. mm. I see. What's your greatest fear? Dying. Dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as you get there, hmm? remember when, uh, before 50s, uh, meet with friends, we never talked about sickness, death. Now, I'm age, that's all you talk about. <laughs> that's what you talk about. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, you've been blessed with a great life, an amazing one. And I'm sure you have a lot more years ahead, so. Yeah, so I'm told, but... Um, but you don't believe it? My daughter, she's a believer into this, and she always tells me mentally, convince yourself you live to 200. <laughs> and if you believe it, huh? by some 200, I've never heard anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. It is well. Anyway, it's been great spending time with you. I totally enjoyed this conversation. And uh, Thank you. I'm grateful that you made time to speak to us here on Joy FM. Thank you, thank you. Any final words before we wrap up? Mm, I thank God for, like I said, to have given me a wonderful family. I'm happy that I've managed to keep them all with me. Mm. Although they got married, they could have gone, follow their husbands. Mm. I have two boys and two girls. Mm. And, uh, at least it makes me feel there was a purpose for whatever I've done, that yeah. they can continue from there. Are you fulfilled? Mm, I can see so, yes. I can see so. Yeah. Well, mm. he lived his purpose, he lived his life. He's fulfilled and he's happy. And he's actually charted the path for many to follow as well. Ernesto Tariconi, Executive Chairman of the Trasaco Valley Estates here on Personality Profile on Joy 99.7 FM and of course on Joy News as well. I'm Lexusville and it's been great spending time with you and on behalf of my technical team and my producers, I'd like to say thank you for spending time with us. Regards to my brother Kwame Wusudansu and his team as well and uh, we'll be back with another edition of Personality Profile. Have a good day. I'll give you my heart.
Welcome to the Joy Headline News at 8. I am Amesi Thompson. The Minority on Parliament's Defence and Interior Committee is calling for a bipartisan inquiry into the bullion van robbery scandal after it emerged some personnel of the police SWAT unit were complacent. Ranking member on Parliament's Defence and Interior Committee, James Agaga, says the circumstances surrounding the two officers indicted in the van robbery case calls for further probe. I am... Um really very surprised about um, what we are hearing from the police. I want to believe the police, but given the past, or if you like, the recent handling of similar matters by the police, such as the Asawasi shooting incident, I am tempted to buy into the suggestion that maybe an independent inquiry would um, put matters to rest. Joining in on this call is the president of the Institute of Security Disaster and Emergency Studies, Dr. Ishmael Norman, who wants an independent commission of inquiry into the heist. If they were killed, if they were murdered, who gave the order? We need to have a commission of inquiry, not only about the killing of the two suspects, but we also need to have a commission of inquiry to dig into criminal cells within the police force. Now, an investigation conducted by the General Legal Council has revealed that 10 students were illegally admitted into the Ghana School of Law by the then acting director of the school, Maxwell Opokwajiman, who is now being considered for appointment into the appeals court. The General Legal Council has since asked that the affected students be withdrawn with immediate effect. A member of the Mines and Energy Committee, Edward Bauer, has called on government to scrap the energy sector levy, sanitation and pollution levy, and special petroleum levy on petroleum products. In the wake of rising prices, he says scrapping them will bring consumers some relief. The government can then come and look at our taxes, which is supposed to be also contributing to petroleum revenues, and see how we can reduce that because of the, the consumer. So the first